All right, thanks for the introduction. So I'm going to present my work on differential private multi-site average treatment effect estimation. And this is joint work with my PhD advisor, Professor Kamalika Chaudhary and Professor David Page at Duke University. So the uh, central question we address in this talk is treatment effect estimation, which estimates if some specific treatment has an effect on some outcome. So for concrete example, the treatment is to, for example, uh, administer drug like aspirin, and the outcome is whether the disease like stroke is cured or not. And this might sound like a usual like binary estimation, but it actually has some unique complications, which I'll get to shortly, and that leads to a um, distinct set of estimators. So typically, the treatment effect estimation is done within like each hospital which has own patients data. And however, the issue here is that the estimate can be unreliable because a hospital can only have a limited number of data. And because we all know that there exists like multiple hospitals in the world, the natural solution would be like combining data across multiple sites for more reliable estimate. However, due to privacy concern, we need to do this in a privacy presuming manner and that is exactly what our work is doing. So uh, we are starting from some preliminaries. First, uh, I'll define the uh, treatment effect estimation more formally. So uh, your individual treatment effect is essentially the difference between uh, what happens if you take a drug and what happens if you don't. And since everyone's different, you know, like we take average of individual treatment effects over entire population to define the average treatment effect, which we call ATE. And this is the estimate of our work. And there are two main challenges for estimating ATE. One is that it's impossible to observe both of what will happen if you take a drug or you don't. So once you, for example, once you take a drug, it's impossible to know what would have, have happened to you if you don't take the drug, right? And natural way to deal with this first challenge is to estimate the effects of treated patients and control patients separately and see the difference. And however, this does not work due to the second challenge, which arises when the data is from the observational studies. That is, uh, whether you take a drug depends on what it's called covariate. So for example, the severity of the disease or age, you know, like patients with more like, severe symptoms would, would be more likely to be administered a drug, right? So the people who take the drug are different from those who do not take, and we need to take this into account when estimating ATE. And on, on top of those difficulties, the goal is, you know, again, to estimate ATE from uh, and individual's data, where each data consists of treatment assignment and observed outcome and the covariates. And the existing solutions include, like for example, matching estimator, inverse propensity weighting, but these solutions are for like single site ATE estimation without careful privacy. And in this work, we aim to carry out multi-site estimation with privacy guarantee. So, uh, I'll just quickly go through what the differential privacy is. So, but like DP essentially guarantees, you know, like changing one person's data doesn't alter the output distribution by much. And the formal definition of DP is as follows. Key point is that we measure how close two distributions are by two parameters, epsilon and delta, and smaller epsilon, and smaller delta means better privacy. And the standard way to achieve differential privacy is to add noise calibrated to what's called global sensitivity. And global sensitivity is defined by the, as the you know, maximum difference between functional outputs where the inputs are any you know, neighboring data sets. And then we then you know, add noise, say like drawn from Laplace distribution calibrated to the global sensitivity. And we naturally observe that if the sensitivity is too high, then the noise dominates the function output and the differential private output becomes meaningless, right? Okay, so let's get back to our problem. So we formalized the goal to be uh, estimating ATE uh, based on data from multiple sites while guaranteeing differential privacy at each site. So guaranteeing different, differential privacy at each site means, you know, everything goes out from one hospital should be differential private. 
and more specifically, we set up the problem as follows. So each side sends um, two differential private estimates to the central untrusted server. And one is the AT estimate, and the other is the variance of their AT estimate. And note that the variance accounts, variance here accounts for you know, both variance due to sampling and due to differential private noise. And the finally, central server aggregates the noisy estimates from all sites to publish the final DPAT estimate. So that's our problem. And uh, we have found two challenges regarding this problem setup. So one is at each side and the other is at the central server. And we address both of the uh, challenges in this work. So for the site level, there's no um, known DP version of well-known ATE estimator. And in this work, we focus on the matching estimator. So I will briefly review what is matching estimator without care for privacy. So recall that we do, do not observe the individual treatment effect because we only observe one of the outcomes, right? So let's say we know, for example, your outcome under treatment. So you, you take the drug, right? Matching estimator first match you with a person just like you who shares the same covariate virus but doesn't take the drug. And then we impute the unobserved outcome with the matched individual's outcome to virtually have the individual treatment effect. So here in this example, uh, person one to four share the same covariate that is they are all teenagers. And the person one who has you know, Y and offs as the observed outcome is paired up with person three, then the virtual individual treatment effect gets to uh, Y1 Ops minus Y3 offs, right? So, and then we finally average over all the virtual individual treatment effects to obtain the AT estimate. And when it comes to privatized matching estimator, you know, we can like analyze its global sensitivity and add calibrated noise to, you know, have the DP version of matching estimator. However, uh, it is shown that the global sensitivity is order of one and thus the noise dominates the you know, estimate. To, to see this, consider the following pair of data sets where the red dot represents the only different individual between two data sets. Uh, in particular, we consider all individuals in D share the same covariate value. For example, like they are all teenagers and that age is the only covariate. And the estimate from the matching estimator pretty much depend on, depends on the red individual here. And if you consider D, D prime neighboring data set D prime that, you know, the red person's data is replaced, then you see the estimate for uh, D and D prime can differ a lot because of the uh, changing one person, right? So to overcome this issue, we instead add noise calibrated to what's called smooth sensitivity. So to begin with, we define the local sensitivity at data set D, which is the maximum difference distance Maximum difference between function output between D and um, D prime, where D prime is the data set obtained by uh, replacing one individual value of D. And by definition, global sensitivity is the upper bound of the local sensitivity. And typically, the local sensitivity is much smaller than the global sensitivity. And uh, if we add noise calibrated, calibrated to local sensitivity, however, it can. Uh, reveal some information about the input data set. So we use the um, smooth version of local sensitivity, which I skipped the detail for this talk. But like in summary, uh, we add noise calibrated smooth sensitivity instead of global sensitivity. And if the smooth sensitivity is much smaller than the global sensitivity, then we get that benefit. And in fact, we showed that, that that is the case for matching estimator. And an, our analysis shows that the smooth sensitivity is approximately as follows. Here, the cardinality of TX and CX are the numbers of people in the treatment and the control groups with uh, covariate X. And what we observe is that if the data set is somehow balanced, which is usually the case, the smooth sensitivity is order of one over N, which is much smaller than the global sensitivity. So therefore, adding noise calibrated to smooth sensitivity is more accurate estimate compared to the one from the global sensitivity. 
So, so far we addressed the challenge at site level. So we next uh, address the challenge at the server. That is the different, so the challenge at server is that, you know, different sites have different estimation qualities due to um, different sample, sample sizes and different privacy requirements. So we all know if the sample size is small, the estimation quality would degrade, right? But uh, in addition to that, by introducing privacy requirements, the quality can get degraded due to differential privacy noise. And this could happen simply because hospital might have different privacy requirements, but also uh, it could happen because some hospitals use their data multiple times and could only use a small privacy budget for the AD estimation, right? And the illustration here, um, so say the dots represents AT estimates from all the sites and tau is the underlying ATE. In non-private case, you know, like it might be just good to like average over all estimates. However, in private case, some sites such as the right most one might publish very noisy estimate due to, uh, you know, like strict privacy requirement and destroy the final estimate. And so our solution idea here is simply to remove the noisy site. So more specifically, you know, so the, instead of simple weighted average with weight proportional to the sample size, uh, the aggregate server first find the subset of site ister that achieves the minimum variance. And the call each site sends the variance of their ATE estimate, which accounts for variance due to both sampling and DP noise. And then the server simply computes the weighted average over the chosen subtips of sites. And we named our aggregation framework as uh, MVAG. So now we have solutions for both challenges at, e at, at site and server. We get to uh, empirical variation of those solutions. So in our experiments, we answer two questions. First is whether the use of smooth sensitivity improves the privacy utility trade-off. And the second is whether the MVI properly aggregates AD estimates with different qualities. So to, to answer the first question, uh, when compared to the results of global sensitivity and smooth sensitivity, and like uh, four lines in both figures uh, represent different aggregation algorithms, and Y axis is the mean absolute error, so smaller is better, and X axis represents how privacy requirements differ by site. But for the sake of comparison between global and smooth sensitivity, we simply see how MAEs are different for you know like each um, setting. And then uh, by noticing the scale of uh, y-axis, we see smooth sensitivity based DP matching algorithm matches much lower error. So that is good. And to understand the performance of MVAG, we compare three other aggregation algorithms for real data sets. And ag all here is like simple weighted ag average aggregation. Ag logic simply uses the site with the largest number of samples. And IVW here is inverse variance weighting where the weight is inversely proportional to the variance. And IVW is actually known to be optimal in non-private case where, you know, like variance is not. And from the results, we see first that, you know, uh, MV ag generally achieves the lowest error. And what's more, the uh, enclosed area in red means um, there exists some sites with very small option or like very strict privacy requirements. In such a case, MBAG outperforms IVW, indicating the suboptimality of IVW when the variants are also randomized to satisfy differential privacy. Okay, so uh, in summary, we set up and work on DPAT estimate with multiple sites, and we propose and then quickly evaluate two new algorithms. One is DP matching algorithm at site, which adds much less noise to the AT estimate. And the other is the minimum variance aggregate of DP estimates at central server. Uh, future work includes investigating other estimates and estimators under differential privacy, and investigate an provably optimal aggregation framework under differential private noise. Uh, that's it.